Hello, and welcome to episode one of Painting with the Noob, where an experienced gamer, such as Gaming Geek here, is going to show the noob, that's me, Roger Summers, how to paint miniatures and put them onto the table so we can have a beautiful, wonderful, imaginative gaming experience. Gaming Geek here has been painting miniatures and creating gaming accessories for quite a long time. So we're going to begin by painting Time of Legends Joan of Arc, which is an eagerly anticipated game, one that I fully kicked. They're 15 millimeter scale. They'll go kind of quickly for us. And as we progress, we're going to learn some of the basic techniques and we'll get more and more advanced as, as we go along. So in this initial video, we're going to just talk about some of the basic things that you're going to need to get ready for when these miniatures arrive. So we're going to do a series of videos over the next few weeks, go step by step with this as we go. When I was looking to paint my own miniature, I went out on the internet a lot, looked at all these videos. I even bought a couple of old VHS videos to kind of help show me how to paint. And I could just never do it. I could never get up and, and feel comfortable with it. And so I actually sat me down once or twice and showed me some of the basics. And it, got me going a little bit. I started getting into the painting. And that's the other thing that I really found, uh, painting with my friend Gaming Geek here. Painting with somebody is, is a lot of fun. You know, you're talking, you're doing it. So that's what we're hoping we're going to do. You're going to have some fun painting with us. We're going to talk about it and uh, we're going to get some good miniatures when we go. So let's get started. Let's talk about the things that we're going to need. Why don't we talk about that first? Um, what, what kind of area do you think somebody should, should paint in? I think one of the things, optimal settings that you can have is sort of a dedicated space or desk that you can leave some of your supplies out. That's, that's the ideal because it can be a barrier to painting when you have to set up all of your supplies and then tear it back down again. So I know not everyone can do that due to limited space, but if you can create a dedicated space, uh, even if it's at your computer table, just set a few of your paints to the side so that at any moment you can sit down and get started painting right away. If that's not possible, you want to have some kind of uh, carrying case that has all of your paints. And I made, this is a homemade one, but Roger, didn't you buy one uh, online? I, I bought a fingernail polish holder, okay? It was like $18 and it's like three or four stacks and it holds about 40 paints. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can do something like that. So anything that makes it easy to set up very quickly and then tear down very quickly. Because again, that can be a mental barrier that keeps you from continuing to paint. Yeah, you want to be able to just sit down, pick up the brushes, dip them in the water, slap some paint on, walk away, do something else you want and then come back and, and do it. And you also want to make sure you have good lighting. So at my painting desk, I do have both an overhead fluorescent light as well as a dedicated lamp that can shine right down onto the figure while I'm painting. Uh, and I also have a pair of magnifying, uh, lighting magnifying glass that I can wear around my head. It was $12 on Amazon. We'll show you a picture of that here in a little bit. But I've also found that as we grow older, um, or even if you just want a little bit of magnification on some of the smaller details, mm -hmm. it can be helpful. The first thing that we're going to do when we grab our miniatures is we're going to... Prime them. Prime them. But before we prime them, actually, we might want to clean them up a little bit, or do we need to wash them, or... Uh... Yeah, sometimes it's a good idea to wash them because the mold release will stay on the miniature. Some people will, though, need to take a little toothbrush, a little uh, liquid Dawn, or any kind of dishwashing liquid, and using warm water just go over it once and then letting it dry. So after we've washed them off, mm -hmm. um, usually the, the plastic minis, they, they come pretty clean. Is there any of that flashing, I guess they call that, right? Right. Flashing is where the two molds come together and a little bit of the plastic went, is injected into the mold and it will create a line. And all I use for that, you can buy a dedicated flash remover, is more than $5. So don't bother doing that. You should have a hobby exacto knife. I use the back edge, not the sharp edge, but the back edge just to rub along that line to remove any flashing that needs to come up. All right, so we've washed them, we've cleaned them up. Looks like a pretty clean miniature. Mm -hmm. What's next? Now you do put primer on. Okay, what kind of primers? So some people do use brush on primer, but for ease and speed, I use spray primer. And my favorite brand is Rust-Oleum, a two times uh, flat a primer, you want to get a probably black and a white, or possibly a gray as an alternative to the white. Gamer Geek, being the experienced painter in, in Gamer, he also bases or primes in, in multiple colors, depending on how these miniatures are going to work out. That's going to be beyond the scope of what we do here in these first few videos, right? And personally, when I've been priming, I like gray. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about gray primer? I think that's a happy medium. 
What you get with the white primer is the colors will pop out a little bit more, and especially if you have a lot of warm colors like red and yellow, the white really helps a lot. Um, and the gray, the gray is a happy medium between the black because it will be very difficult to get reds and yellows to show when you use black primer. The benefit though of black primer is you pre, it's pre-shading the model. And so that first coat that you're putting down will be darker and you can slowly build up to light. So I think for the noob, all right, I think we're going to stick with gray to begin with. And maybe as we advance and we do some other, other minis down the road, we'll start priming them in different colors and we'll start seeing how some of the effects uh, turn out. So there was a, a great uh, suggestion on the type of primer to buy and uh, the colors that, that we're going to go with. So yeah, and these, these are only $4 a can. Uh, I would actually suggest against buying model mini specific spray primers because they're not any better yeah. and so these are just four dollars at uh, walmart and you can pick these up pretty easily and, and again uh when you're using these primers and things like that we're going to show you how to prime in the in the next video but uh everybody kind of has their own preference mm -hmm. right and but it's only years of experience and using these things often that that you develop what you like the best but we're going to give you the safe bets right now that should work universally and generally. You may come to uh, appreciate a different type of primer later on. So that gets us into the next big thing is the paints, right? There's so many paints out there, so many different vendors and, and qualities of paints. And that's really what's one of the most terrifying and overwhelming things for the noob getting into, right? What paint should I get? If you are starting right off the bat, and especially if you are on a budget, I actually suggest for beginning painters to buy craft paint. These are cheap, they're a dollar a bottle, but even more so than these is you can buy one of those paint craft sets, maybe a paint by number that has the basic colors in it and there's these little paint pots that you flip open for maybe $5, very, very cheap. And the reason why I suggest doing that is, especially if you've never painted before, this is a way to dip your toe into the painting world to see if you even like it because if <laughs> you might decide, no, this is not for me, and you don't want to invest $100 on a paint set, and then decide you're never going to use it. Like this Citadel paint right here, this one little uh, tub, it's going to set you back $7. Seven, seven bucks, right, for, for this thing of wash. And like a, a whole set of these washes is like 50 bucks. And you can find a lot of these nice basic paint kits, right? Uh, that, that are out of the box that are around 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I, I did for my Rising Sun. I got this set and it's a great set of paints. Um, now the thing about these acrylic paints out of these tubs that we get from Walmart and places like that is they're thick. Mm -hmm. Okay so here's a big thing to, to consider when using these as opposed to like these model masters over here right? Mm -hmm. Um, what's the, what can you tell me that's the big difference between these two guys? Right. So the big difference is, and uh, just as price comparison, this cost me about uh, a little over $2. And so for a lot less paint, I, it's cost more than the craft paint. But what you get out of this is two advantages. One is it's not as thick, and so you don't have to water it down as much. And then secondly, the amount of pigment that's in this paint is a lot more than the pigment that's found in craft paint. In other words, the reason why this is so expensive is that the amount of pigment makes it so that you're coating the miniature a lot easier. You don't have to do multiple layers, whereas this cheap craft paint, you might have to do multiple layers because it just doesn't have as much pigment. Right, so there's lots of different paints out there. And again, you're just gonna try some. You're gonna find out what works best for you and what what consistency you like to work with all the all the time and uh, what makes it easier for you to paint with right yeah this is actually reaper brand reapers uh, yeah reaper master series um, i bought these for those of you if you really do want to start off with a set my actual suggestion is to go with army painter because they have actually pretty affordable well-priced sets and i find that the army painter paints um, are pretty well diluted so you're not putting as much water in your brush. Uh, these can be a little bit thicker, and so you do need to add quite a bit more water for Reaper, but it's a good brand. I've chosen to go primarily with that brand, but if you are just getting in want, want to buy a relatively cheaper set, I would definitely go with Army Painter. So there you are. The Army Painters are a good noob uh, quality paint. It's not going to be as finicky or as touchy. You're not going to have to play with it as much to get consistency and just to get it right on the miniature, right? Moving on from 
from the paints is the next most important thing, and those are the brushes. That's okay. right. So what, what can you tell us about brushes? Here? So again, just like anything else, uh, a lot of painters will have their own favorites. I personally don't invest a lot in brushes. I bought the, this set with the smallest brush tips at Walmart for $3. Okay, I, I have to interrupt here, okay? <laughs> so now this is the experienced painter, right? And he can basically take any paint brush and he's gonna make it work. And he's gonna be able to apply that deft touch that he has with it. And I, I agree, buying, buy a lot, okay? Go out there and buy a ton of paint brushes. Buy the cheap ones and then go out and buy yourself a couple of the finer ones at, at your local hobby shop or at your gaming store, okay? I know I need a super, super fine brush at right. times, right? Mm -hmm. And you're not going to get that out of the No, you're not going to get that because even the smallest brush here uh, is not going to be fine enough to do the real small details like the pupils and the eye, although with 15 millimeter you're not going to be painting eyes. Um, and I do have a more, I have spent a, for, a ten dollars for a specific miniatures brush which I think is triple zero size which is very small mm -hmm. but I would definitely recommend getting the smallest brush you can find at one point just so you can do some touch-up work and uh, get some of those finer details for the less experienced hands like like us new finally what other tools might we need to begin painting yeah so any any cup or I just use a Old salsa, salsa jar, jar uh, and I've used this for 10 years I think uh, hold water. You'll probably need two of them, right? One one for clean water. You're always going to have to have a, a, a vessel of clean water and then one to clean up, right? Mm -hmm. and, and clean the brushes in. And once it starts getting dirty, you just pitch it, start with another clean one, or just move your other one over. You're always going to need a little bit of clean water around to help dilute your paints and uh, for, for some other techniques as well. And, and what's the other really important thing here? I just use a plastic uh, dish for my palette. So uh, any type of little plastic plate. I, I know I've got a plastic lid at home that I use. Uh, the nice thing about this is I, I'm cleaning mine. I think Bum kind of just uses Draws them. Mine. and Yeah, but so after I'm done with them, I kind of recycle them a little bit more, uh, save some money. But So get yourself a, a nice piece of plastic that uh, can collect your paints on it. One of the other things that you might want to run out and get before we start are some basic elements and uh, can you tell us about some of those? Sure, so if you look at this model here, this orc, um, you'll see gravel that I glued down as well as what's called flocking and this you can find at any hobby store, especially railroad supply section of the hobby store, but they do have them as well at miniature stores and so again Army Painter makes these little tufts, grass, grass tufts that you can add um, or you can just get a 3D kind of effect, right? Right. right. And again, this is a little bit more advanced, and so you do not have to do this. You can just keep your bases gray or paint them brown. You do not have to add this, but I think it's relatively easy to do, and we'll show you how this to do it. This is an easy, an easy technique, and it adds a lot of life to the miniature, mm -hmm. right? But we're just going to go with a basic in, in this noob series, uh, our basic green flocks yep. and our basic gravel flocks, yep. right? Just gravel. And so these, you can buy them in you know, 16 ounce bags or something like that, I guess, at, at your local hobby store. Mm -hmm. Finally, oh, we got some glue over here too. Uh, occasionally right. we might have to stick some parts together. Uh, with the Joan of Arc series, I know we've got a ginormous dragon, but I think that those lock into place. Okay. Uh, but occasionally we might, you might need to get some glue. This is just regular Loctite super glue. Mm -hmm. uh, I, the reason why I like this brand is just because the tip is really small and easy to use, but I know other brands, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, but that's sort of my favorite glue to do, use. Do you have a pro so with, with all of these paints and glues, uh, what about them getting clogged and, and things like that? Sometimes uh, these dropper bottles will get clogged with paint. Fortunately, um, I can remove the tip of them pretty easily. You just push that tip out kind yeah, of with the edge of your thumb, or if you don't want to get dirty, use a rag and just kind of grab it. Right, okay. or you can use, or I just use a paper clip and I poke through the hole, okay. and that solves it. So I, I, I know when my tips get clogged like that, I, I'll sometimes push them out and wash them up, take a toothbrush in there, get an old nasty toothbrush. You can scrub it out, and that'll help, help clean it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, at the end, we are going to want to make sure that our, our figures stay pretty. Well, how do we do? What, do we, what do we need for that? So I have tried a lot of different dull uh, or matte sprays, and I will swear that this is the one you want. 
Um, this is Tester's Dull Coat. A Tester's product? Right, oh. Tester's product, which is normally used for models. Okay. Um, plastic models that you put together. But this is the best one because a lot of matte sprays will cloud over, especially when you're spraying during the summer and the humidity will cause it to cloud over and that's the last thing you want right. after you spend all this time Paint, painting damage. is for it to cloud over and so testers will not do that. This is more pricey because the can is really small and it's like four dollars for this can. Uh, but it's worth it because you don't want to mess up your models. What else can you think of before we wrap up here tonight? I think that's pretty much it. And my encouragement is really you don't have to spend a lot of money. For 10 years uh, I have a whole case of miniatures that I use for Dungeons and Dragons and for 10 years I only used these craft paints. I didn't get into miniature specific paints. A poorly painted miniature is better than a completely gray non-painted miniature. And so this is a good way to start. Well, and remember, this does take time. You know, for most of us, it's just going to be the attempt is, is the success for us and they look good and they're okay to play with and you'll get better if that's what you want to do. A lot of us aren't going to spend the time and the years and the energy it does painting these wonderful miniatures. But if it's something you like, we hope that we're going to get you down that path and that you will be able to make a beautiful, art-worthy miniature. We hope you enjoyed our intro this week. Stay tuned. Uh, make sure you tell your friends about us. Again, we're doing the Time of Legends set, but we're hoping that this is going to be a basic tutorial for any miniatures that you're ever going to want to play with, right? So uh, thanks for joining us. Love all, serve all, all the best.